Hi everyone, my name is Sabrina O'Grady and today I'm going to be presenting on water pollution and its effects on our brain. A little bit about me, I'm a rising junior at Dominican Academy in New York City. Some extracurriculars I'm involved in include pre-med society and coding and engineering club. I'm also a volunteer at Chip's Soup Kitchen in Park Slope. I'm a participant in the Columbia University Accomplished Community Health Program. I play both harp and viola, and I'm a black belt in Taekwondo and often volunteer helping the little kids. I'm very passionate about medicine and plan on becoming a neurosurgeon specializing in tumors. I'm also passionate about water pollution and participated in Project Soapbox discussing pollution in the Gowanus Canal. I also participated in the Billion Oyster Project, which aims to restore 1 billion oysters to the New York Harbor by 2035. So what is water pollution? Water pollution can be defined as the contamination and introduction of harmful substances in our bodies of water. This often occurs as a result of human activity. Water pollution is seen everywhere all across the world in various forms. Approximately 2 billion people consume contaminated water worldwide. On the map, the areas in blue refer to areas with a high amount of water pollution. It is also in densely populated regions and industrialized regions with many factories. Water pollution can be a result from industrialization, mining, deforestation, waste disposal, and waste from agriculture. Water is very, very, very important and essential to the human existence. Approximately 50 to 70% of our body is made up of water. We use it in our everyday lives and it is constantly existing around us. We use it to drink, we use it to bathe, to cook, and to clean, and so many things. Water is the key to staying healthy and hygienic as it regulates the body's natural processes and maintains our organs' health. That being said, water is a natural given right and incredibly important for public health. Pollution poses a massive threat to lives around the globe, where over 1 million people die of water pollution-related illnesses every year. These are just a few water contaminants, and I'll be explaining each of them and how they affect our brain. So arsenic studies show that it can cause brain damage as well as cancer, such as lung cancer and bladder cancer. Lead can lead to behavioral and developmental defects in children, as well as heart disease and kidney disease. Aluminum is found in water in very, very, very low amounts, but when it is greater than 0.1 milligrams per liter, it can lead to dementia and Alzheimer's disease, neurological disorders, or kidney disease. And pesticides can lead to neurodegenerative diseases, especially Parkinson's disease, and coma or death. For this presentation, I will be focusing on pesticides and what they can do to our body. So pesticides control harmful plants and animals in agriculture, and although it is beneficial for the crops and gets rid of pests such as mice, rats, mosquitoes, or ticks, it can be very harmful to humans when ingested. Approximately 385 million people suffer from pesticide poisoning every year. It can get into and contaminate water sources, usually by water runoff or natural disasters such as floods. Once it is ingested, it can cause irreversible brain damage and loss of brain activity. Pesticides can also cause Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder in the central nervous system that affects movement, posture, and causes tremors. Parkinson's disease is also linked to depression, hallucination, and loss of sense of smell. This is caused by a loss of neurons in the substantia nigra, such as dopamine, which signals nerves to stimulate muscle movement. Pesticides like dieldrin and binomal cause this loss of dopamine, and other pesticides such as organophosphates, paraquat, xerum, and maneb contribute to the development of Parkinson's disease. So the image on the right 
um, compares a healthy patient to a Parkinson's patient. We can see that there is a great amount of dopamine on the left image, and that is signaling the muscle cells to cause movement in our hands. But a person with Parkinson's disease, on the other hand, there isn't as much dopamine. And so it can't signal the muscle cells to cause movement and causes hand tremors. So what can we do about this issue that is affecting everyone around the world in so many different ways? One, we can replace harmful chemicals like pesticides with non-toxic ones and remove pesticides in a safe manner. Two, we can advocate and speak out about water pollution in our community. I did this with Project Soapbox in front of many politicians, and I hope they are taking what I said into consideration and advocating for better laws and policies relating to water. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle. I know you've heard this, these terms so many times, but they are important. We need to reduce the amount of chemicals that we use and wasteful products. We should reuse things like straws and utensils and water bottles, and of course, recycle our plastic and paper. Lastly, we can volunteer at local cleanups like beaches, parks, and streets. If everyone does just a little bit around the world, then we can make a massive difference and see huge change within the next decade. These are references that I used to conduct this presentation. And I would like to thank my family and friends for supporting me in my endeavors in the field of medicine and to the Global Health Leaders Conference for giving me this opportunity to present. If you would like to reach out to me or if you have any questions, you can do so via email or LinkedIn. Thank you so much for listening.